There is a loss of jobs in South Africa. In fact, from uh, low shading to job shading. I must call a pastor to take you out now. Revolutionary greetings to the people of South Africa, Africa, and the diaspora, and thanks very much for tuning in to yet another episode of the EFF uh, podcast. Uh, my name is Titus Tsongar Kotaram Sengen Tsoleka. Today, I'm taking you from Winima Digizela Mandela House to Southwest Africa uh, in Namibia, where uh, we are joined by uh, the leader of the EFF in Namibia, uh, Commissar uh, Saddam Amushelelo, uh, just to get the very latest regarding the deregistration of the EFF in Namibia. We understand this November. Uh, Namibia will be going into general elections, and the EFF ought to be part of that uh, historic elections. Now, thank you very much, uh, my brother, Commissar uh, Amushelelo, uh, for making time here on the EFF uh, podcast. Although you are joining us for the second time uh, via Zoom, you're supposed to be here, in fact, in studio. <laughs> no, thank you very much, my brother Titus. Um, I think it's rather unfortunate that we're not doing this interview in the revolutionary house of Mama. I think her spirit would have guided us uh, to even amplify this platform and make sure that the message resonates across the entire African continent. But at least we are thankful for technology so you are able to connect one another. You are in South Africa, I'm in Namibia, and here we are looking at each other as if we are in the same studio. So I think we must be grateful for the technology in order for us to be able to ease our communication methods. Now, thank you for the question. Uh, our party, as you rightfully said, was deregistered earlier this year. Mm -hmm. um, our party was deregistered for political reasons due to the fact that the Namibia Economic Freedom Fighters is one of the most robust and radical political organizations in Namibia. We are one of those no-nonsense political organizations. Uh, when we say we are going to do something, we best definitely mean it. We don't mince our words. We don't joke around. We are the only serious political organization that's willing to fight for our people, to fight for our masses. And that is why this corrupt ruling government decided to illegitimately deregister our political organization, mm -hmm. which was found unconstitutional by a competent court and we are grateful that a competent court was able to sort of tell this corrupt government that what they are doing is wrong, is absolutely wrong, it's unconstitutional, it's unheard of. Never in the history of our society or our country has a political organization ever been deregistered. This was the first time after 34 years of flag independence that the political organization was deregistered. And it was deregistered because they know for a fact that we have the grassroots level, we've got the workers, we've got the masses, we've got the people who are subjugated, the oppressed. So we literally have the whole entire society from rural areas to the villages, to the urban areas. So we are the only political formation that is genuine and that is serious about fighting for the interest of our people. And that is why we, with the assistance of lawyers from EFF South Africa, uh -huh. as well as our fearless lawyer, Kadila Amomo, from Kadila Amomo Legal Practitioners, we are able to mount uh, a, a massive and uh, great defense in order for our political organization to be re-registered. And we are now ready for November 27, and we are going to make sure that uh, the ruling party suffers for trying and for attempting to deregister and to derail the genuine party that stands to fight for our people. So without fear of contradiction, the EFF in Namibia is certainly ready uh, to usher in uh, economic freedom for the people of uh, Namibia come the 27th of uh, November? Most well, certainly. We've been ready. Uh, we've been on the ground. We've remained on the ground. In fact, we have not changed. 
Uh, and that is why, obviously, we are the only political organization that resonates with people from all levels of society. Mm -hmm. But most especially, we resonate with our grassroots level people, with our messes, uh, with our working class. Those are the people who we fight for on a daily basis. And uh, unfortunately, the elites, uh, those are high up in society, do not like us. In fact, whenever they see the red beret, they want to hide, they want to run away because they know for a fact that we do not stand to give anyone a chance who continues to oppress others. So that is why on the 27th of November, we are most certainly ready to usher in a new government. And we are not going to sort of joke around. We are going to make sure that we defeat the corrupt ruling yeah. party ballot boxes. Mm -hmm. You're not here to play. You're here to deliver economic freedom in uh, Namibia for the benefit of the proletariat. And let's look at some of the promises, rather. The EFF is known for commitments. Uh, what are you committing for the people of Namibia ahead of the uh, elections? Is there any manifesto? Our manifesto will be launching it uh, this coming Saturday, uh, the 2nd of November. Uh, as you know very well, we do not make promises. We make commitments and we are standing for those commitments. Now, some of those commitments is going to be radical reform uh, in terms of land redistribution. Uh, it's going to be radical reform in terms of mineral uh, ownership. This thing whereby uh, the state only owns 5%, 2%, 3% in our minerals. We are going to have either 50% or 100% ownership. In fact, what we're calling for is the next complete nationalization of all our mineral resources. So we are not joking around when it comes to the reforms that we want to bring about in society because unfortunately, this golden gloves approach has not worked. And as you can see, these golden gloves have only made our people much more poorer. Our people now live in slums. They live in shacks. Mm -hmm. In fact, they've, 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 they've sort of uh, glamorized poverty. So unfortunately, we are no longer going to glamorize poverty. We are going to ensure that we usher in economic emancipation and economic freedom in our lifetime. And that is why on the 27th of November, we are asking the people of Namibia to give us the mandate and a clear mandate to be able to govern this country in order for us to bring in the changes that we want to bring for society. We are talking about the current leaders who do not have an appreciation of the aspiration of uh, the working class, the poor and the marginalized. We look at Namibia, it gained it, uh, its independence in 1990, uh, but today, over 30 years later, you do not actually have uh, you know, a good employment rate. In fact, Namibia is one of the most unequal societies in, in, in Africa or in the world. Now, let's look at some of the achievements, rather, that were made. In South Africa, in 1994, we know that what was achieved was a political freedom than economic freedom. Is there any economic freedom in Namibia? Or rather, is there any uh, even uh, you know, political freedom? Because now we understand that the EFF was uh, deregistered, although now through your efforts... Uh, we are back on the ballot. But how do you characterize uh, the politics of uh, Namibia in as far as uh, freedom and economy are concerned? You see, Chris Honey once said, what he fears the most is the liberator becoming the oppressor, living in mansions and driving around in black Absolutely. Mercedes. Absolutely. And his prophecy has become real. They, there's, there's no difference between MPLA. ZANU PF, uh, ANC, Fred Limo, these guys came to live up to the same exact words of Chris Honey. The only difference that we have done at independence is we only replaced the South African apartheid flag with the Namibian flag, and we obviously got an anthem, but other than that, we have not been able to see uh, housing development for our people. We have not been able to see an improvement in the health sector. We have not been able to see an improvement in the education sector. 
We have not been able to see an improvement in our water infrastructure. We have not been able to see an improvement in our electricity. In fact, we still import 70% of our electricity. Majority of it comes from South Africa, which is a load shedding country. So it, it, it bothers me that we are dependent on a country that is also having energy problems, but that is where we are importing most of our electricity. So nothing much has changed apart from street names. Uh, they've obviously taken over most of the streets. Yeah. You will find Nyoma Drive, Hagegingo Drive. So they've basically just renamed whatever it is that uh, the apartheid and colonial regime de developed. That's the only thing that they've been able to do. We have seen that they've built for themselves a massive headquarters. I think Swapo has the biggest headquarters compared to all other headquarters of any political organization. Even Lutili House doesn't compare to what these guys have built. These guys have built a billion dollar uh, headquarters, courtesy of the Chinese uh, government, uh, because I do not think that Swapo has that amount of money. I think it is the Chinese government that sponsored that. So all we have seen is uh, statues of them, uh, street names. They've built themselves uh, a new state house at the cost of about 600 million government offices with the latest air conditionings, with the latest comfort chairs. So those are the things that they've mostly focused on. Obviously, they drive the latest fleet of uh, luxurious vehicles uh, with the uh, impeccable state motorcade. You would most probably confuse them for the sheikh of Abu Dhabi, but they are just ordinary African leaders. And unfortunately, it seems to me that these people have forgotten the true purpose of what it is that they went to go do in order for them to liberate our country. And some of us as young people, we truly feel ashamed for our people who died for our country's independence, because it seems to me their blood has gone to waste because their children are not enjoying the fruits of this independence. Their children, in fact, are much more hungrier. They are in poverty. They are dying from hunger. So if they could wake up today, I'm sure they will look at their comrades and one by one, they will put bullets into their heads because they will be utterly disappointed in terms of what their fellow comrades have done to destroy our country. Yeah. In fact, that in, before independence, a domestic worker could afford a house. A domestic worker could afford to have a decent living. Today, engineers, doctors, they are unable to afford houses because unfortunately, the housing markets have become ridiculously too expensive. And that is why the Namibia Economic Freedom Fighters is fighting to decommodify a house. A house is not supposed to be a commodity. Mm -hmm. A house is a basic need. And it's a shame that this current corrupt government has made a house a commodity, which is something that's supposed to be a basic need. Titus, we must be cognizant of the fact that no one is raised in heaven. We are all raised in homes. And if we are unable to give our people decent homes, how then do we expect to have a decent society with functioning people if people are being raised in shacks where there's no water, there's no electricity, they must use river beds when they want to use the toilet, they must walk three, four, ten kilometers for them to fetch water. Their shacks are constantly burning down because they have to use paraffin or candle lights in order for their children to be able to study. So these are the conditions in which Namibians are finding themselves after 34 years of independence. So when we say some of us that nothing much has changed, obviously the critics are going to say, no, the ruling party has done a lot, but com in comparison to the small population that our country has and the amount of resources that we have, there is absolutely no way Namibians were supposed to be dying from hunger. There's absolutely no way Namibians were supposed to be living in zincs, uh, structures that we call shakes or ghettos. There's absolutely no way. So this is a failure of this corrupt ruling government. The only thing that we can visibly see is we have seen them become bigger. Their bellies are as big as whale sharks. Uh, so that's about the only thing because some of them, when they came back from uh, uh, exile, they were as skinny as us, but today they've become larger than life figures. Um, I think some of them look like Gwede Mantashe. 
So it seems to me it's an African trend of being so massive. And you yeah. were arrested uh, most recently uh, for taking to the streets. I saw you by the Ministry of Labor uh, burning tires, uh, true to your character, radicalism, and uh, being militant. Uh, can you just talk us through uh, the arrest? Uh, what, 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 what led up to the arrest and uh, what was the protest all about? So we have one of the most incompetent and useless ministers called Utoni Nuyoma, who heads the Ministry of Labor. Now, what is said is that Utoni Nuyoma is the son of the founding father of our country, called Sem Nuyoma. Now, this sellout of a boy who happens to be, we call him uh, the bundle of sadness, his ministry under his watch has become the most utterly, most corrupt and useless ministry. So what happened is that there is a Chinese company called Zongmei Engineering Group, which is constructing a road headed to the airport. Mm -hmm. Now, on the 21st of March, we had warned the ministry to say that there was an accident in July, whereby one of the workers got injured. And this was due to the fact that safety measures are not being adhered to. However, the ministry ignored to send out its labor inspectors to go and do investigations and see if worker safety is being prioritized, which led to a worker dying due to pure negligence on the part of the Chinese company, as well as on the part of the ministry that failed to send its people. So as an act of protest, we went outside the ministry to go bend tires so that they can come out of their offices and go and do their work. In fact, immediately after we bent those tires, they grounded and halted the operation of that particular company. They are now busy apparently with investigations. However, we'll be monitoring that situation. And unfortunately, it is said in our country that we must first resort to burning of tires in order for service to be delivered to our people. And it is said that people first must die in order for the government to react. And obviously that led to my arrest uh, on my, on, 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 I burned the tires last week, Friday. Uh, the police apparently have been looking for me uh, for, for, for the last past few days. So I went, being a radical and militant people who fears nothing, I took myself to the police. I handed myself over to the police. In fact, they took an hour to arrest me because I think they first needed to contact the army to come and assist them to arrest me because that's how militant and fearless some of us are. But I was in their offices and they could still not arrest me. I was wondering why were they taking so long to arrest me? So it clearly shows you we have an incompetent government that is very much corrupt. And that is why some of us are going to continue advocating and agitating for things to change in our society because things can no longer continue being the same they are. A breadwinner has died. A family has lost a father. They've lost an uncle. They've lost a brother. And unfortunately, it cannot continue going on like this. Earlier this year, two people died again at the Chinese construction site, whereby aluminum glasses fell on them. And those two poor workers died again. And it seems to me the ministry does not care because the Chinese obviously have this corrupt government in their pockets. And that is why some of us have been saying that Namibia is no longer being run from Ventuk, but it is being controlled from Beijing. Talking about Beijing, the number of Chinese in Namibia has tremendously grown uh, since independence. Uh, we know uh, Namibia uh, for its mineral resources, your diamond, your gold. Why? What is attracting these Chinese in uh, Namibia and what good are they doing in uh, Namibia? Are you, uh, the people of Namibia, benefiting from the Chinese? Absolutely not. So the Chinese started coming in this country and they first set up their retails through these China shops. Now, in those China shops, that's some of the places where our people are experiencing some of the most horrible conditions. Now, remember, our currency is pegged to your currency. So when I say 600 Namibian dollars, that's obviously almost similar to me saying 600 rand. So these are some of the salaries that our people are paid. Imagine 
Titus being paid six hundred Namibian dollars on a monthly basis. Yeah. How do you pay your rent? How do you buy food with six hundred Namibian dollars? You you absolutely can. Then obviously the Chinese took a keen interest in our construction sectors. They have now completely taken over all of our construction sectors. All major infrastructures in this country is being built by the Chinese. And then eventually they started looking at our minerals. Now the Chinese, I must inform you now, we are the second largest producer of uranium in the world. Majority of our uranium mines are now owned by China. And China is literally on a daily basis taking our uranium and they're taking it back to China. You will notice that China, I think in 2008, only had about 150 warheads. Thanks to our uranium, China now has over 500 nuclear warheads. And thanks to our uranium, China is now powering its industries with our uranium. So the Chinese are doing absolutely nothing to assist the Namibians because there is no way we are the second largest producer of uranium, but China is not assisting us to put up our own nuclear plants, given the fact that we import 70% of our electricity and given the fact that we are actually relying on South Africa for electricity. So if China was truly a friend of Namibia, they would have assisted us in putting up plants, nuclear power plants, so that we are able to produce electricity and so that perhaps we are also able to repay our brothers, South Africa, who's been assisting us with energy for the last 34 years in order to say, comrades, while you are busy fixing your load shedding problems, here is electricity at a much more reduced cost so that our people in South Africa can also continue to flourish. So the Chinese have literally taken over most of our mineral resources. Uh, you know very well there's a lithium rush. Namibia also has lithium. The Chinese on a daily basis are taking out our lithium. Uh, the Chinese have also set up a cement plant, which is obviously convenient for them because remember, they are the biggest uh, contractors in terms of infrastructure. So they obviously are producing the cement and they are bringing in all majority of the trucks and all of these things, they are all coming from China. So they are not literally putting back anything into the economy. They are just taking and taking. In fact, the Chinese are like parasites. And as a society, if we are not careful, they are going to deplete literally all our resources. And once they depleted all our resources, they are going to vacate. And most of them, they have started becoming naturalized citizens. Majority of them have got Namibian citizenship. In fact, uh, they are basically Namibians and there's nothing that we can do. Most of them are buying their citizenship through this corrupt government. And that is why we need to take over government so that we can fix some of these issues that have been going wrong in our society. Mm -hmm. And let's look at corruption in, let's look at corruption in uh, Namibia. No, thank you very much, uh, Commissar uh, Saddam Amushelelo, for making time. And uh, we wish you all the best uh, ahead of the elections, uh, hoping that this time around the EFF will make serious inroads in, in, in government and change the lives of the people of Namibia. Simone.